The stench of stale sweat and fear was so thick I could taste it. A rancid paste on the back of my tongue. Before me, the Inquisitors shuffled in their crimson robes, their eyes gleaming like hungry vultures above beaked noses. They'd already read the charges. Heresy, demon worship, sorcery. It didn't matter that the evidence was thin, whispers, and the damned brand scorching my palm. The demon's legacy. You stand accused, Evren. The lead Inquisitor's voice cracked like dry leather stretched over bone. Have you anything to say in your defense? Defense? What did they expect? A spirited denial, a plea for mercy. I knew my fate had been sealed the moment I was dragged into this dungeon. I was a pawn in a far larger game. The church needed a scapegoat. Someone to blame for the failing harvests, the dying livestock. They needed someone to distract from their own greed and gluttony. And here I was, marked by birth, the perfect fall guy. My gaze drifted to the brazier in the centre of the room. The flames licked at a set of wickedly curved irons. Their intended destination was no secret. Even without my supposed demonic gift, my tongue was a silver weapon. Too often, I spoke what they didn't want to hear, pointed out their lies while they wallowed in excess. Just this, I finally answered, my voice rough from disuse. May your God, if he exists, judge you far harsher than ever you condemned me. I smiled then, thin and humorless, as the guards hauled me forward. They bound my wrists to a chain dangling from the ceiling. My bare feet barely brushed the cold stone floor, the iron shackles digging cruelly into my ankles. The Inquisitor cleared his throat, rattling off a rote prayer I didn't bother listening to. One word kept repeating through my skull. Survive. I had nothing else. A guard stepped forward, a grim youth barely out of his teens. His hands shook as he lifted a glowing iron. That fear, that sliver of pity, was my only chance. Wait, I hissed. He flinched, the iron wavering. I have information. A vision of the true enemy. The Inquisitors straightened. Greed sparked in their eyes. Whatever demon they believed infested me, they wanted that power for themselves. I dangled there for hours, weaving a tale of a rival church in the north, their priests gathering an army of shadows, their goal to bring ruin upon the kingdom. Outlandish but plausible enough to plant the seed. Lies were the only weapons left in my arsenal. Eventually my tormentors caved. The promise of power, of control, was too great. The brand was forgotten, my demonic heritage swept conveniently aside. I was given a sword, armour, and a bony old nag. My instructions were brutal in their simplicity. Locate this supposed threat and deliver their severed heads. As I stumbled from the dungeon, a ragged cheer arose from the gathered villagers. They believed their prayers for salvation were answered. Fools, pawns, the lot of them. This wasn't salvation, merely the turning of the wheel. But in that turning, a chance arose. Freedom, even if steeped in blood. I would survive at any cost, and perhaps one distant day, that demon blood in my veins would be my weapon, rather than my doom. They all wanted a piece of my tainted soul. The church, the nobles, those faceless enemies in the north. They just might be very disappointed with what they get. Sunlight, a harsh accusing blade, cleaved through the dungeon entrance, momentarily blinding me as I emerged. The cheers from the villagers were a cacophony of distant buzzing, my head still pounding from the ordeal. The rusty sword felt alien in my hand, the weight unfamiliar against my abused flesh. A stable hand, a young boy no older than ten, approached leading a nag that looked even older. Its ribs jutted like sharpened elbows beneath a dull, matted coat. Here's your mount, demon spawn, he spat, his voice laced with a fear he barely contained. May the ravens pick your bones clean in the wild. I ignored him. Pity or fear. Both had their uses. I mounted the animal with a grunt, the ache in my back protesting. My gaze swept over the gathered throng, 
faces contorted in a mix of hope and barely concealed fear. They saw a monster, their supposed saviour. Don't worry, good people, I said, voice hoarse. I'll be back with proof to quell your anxieties. My words were laced with a sardonic edge, but the villagers seemed oblivious, their eyes fixed on the mark branding my palm. Leaving the stench of the dungeon behind, I rode out of the village at a slow pace. Freedom, a word that tasted metallic in my mouth. This wasn't freedom, just another turn of the screw, but it was a turn I could manipulate. The provided map was a joke, a smudged parchment with barely discernible landmarks. North was my only direction, a direction that stretched before me as endless as my own despair. Hunger gnawed at my belly, a familiar companion from years of meagre rations. Dusk painted the sky a bloody red as I stopped by a stream, the nag wheezing in protest. Dismounting, I cupped my hands and drank, the cool water a momentary reprieve. The air grew heavy, carrying the scent of damp earth and something else. Decay. My hand slipped to the hilt of the sword. The Inquisitors wouldn't have bothered with training, assuming the demonic side of me would handle any fights. Arrogant fools. My fighting experience was limited to scrapes in back alleys, a brawl here and there. This was different. This was survival, not some petty squabble. The decaying scent grew stronger. I unsheathed the sword, the metal cold and damp in my grip. The only sounds were the babbling brook and the frantic thump of my own heart. Suddenly, a growl ripped through the quiet. A hulking creature emerged from the trees. A twisted parody of a bear, its fur matted and patchy, teeth bared in a grotesque grin. Hunger glinted in its eyes, a hunger that mirrored my own. This was no fantastical beast from the church's fevered dreams. This was a predator, driven by primal needs. My supposed demonic blood wouldn't save me here, only raw skill and cunning. The bear charged. Adrenaline jolted through me, a cold clarity replacing my terror. I rolled to the side, the creature's massive paw tearing a furrow in the earth where I had stood. I scrambled to my feet, my heart hammering against my ribs. The fight was brutal, a dance of desperation. The bear was stronger, driven by a monstrous hunger. But I was faster, fueled by a different kind of desperation, the desire to survive against all odds. Using the agility honed by years spent living on the streets, I landed a glancing blow on the beast's side. It roared in pain, its momentum thrown off. Seizing my chance, I lunged forward, thrusting the sword upwards. The blade sank into the creature's fleshy underbelly, a sickening crunch shattering the night's silence. The bear thrashed, its hot breath washing over me, then collapsed with a thud. I stood there, gasping for breath, legs shaking. The world seemed to swim before my eyes. The bear lay still, blood staining the earth a sickly crimson. This wasn't some grand adventure. A quest for redemption. This was a fight for bare existence, every second a battle against the wilderness, against those who hunted me, against the demon within. The night deepened, the only light coming from a few scattered stars struggling to pierce the thick canopy of leaves. With a weary sigh, I dragged the creature's carcass closer to the fire I had managed to coax to life. The bear might not have been friendly, but it would have to do for dinner. The bear meat was tough and stringy, but it filled the emptiness in my stomach. The fire crackled merrily, casting shadows that danced on the surrounding trees. Sleep, a precious commodity, felt a million miles away. The events of the day replayed in my mind, a grim loop of fear and violence. The Inquisitor's gambit was clear. They didn't care if the northern threat actually existed. They simply wanted a pawn to disappear into the wilderness a convenient scapegoat for whatever calamity might befall the kingdom. I, the marked heir, was the perfect patsy. But pawns have a habit of becoming unpredictable. This mission was my only chance at a semblance of freedom, and I intended to exploit it for all it was worth. The map was useless, a childish drawing on a scrap of parchment. North was all I had, a vast, uncaring direction that swallowed the horizon. 
Rising to my feet, I sheathed the sword, the cold metal a familiar weight against my hip. The bear carcass lay half-eaten. Dawn peeked through the trees, painting the sky with streaks of orange and pink. I saddled the nag, the poor creature looking even more dejected in the cold light of day. It wasn't much of a mount, but it was faster than my own two feet. We set off, a mismatched pair venturing into the unknown. The forest floor was a treacherous maze of tangled roots and fallen branches. The nag stumbled more than once, threatening to throw me. Patience, a quality I hadn't known I possessed, became my most valuable asset. Each step forward was a victory, a defiance against the odds stacked against me. By midday the forest had thinned, giving way to rolling hills dotted with patches of scrubland. The air carried the faint scent of smoke, and I felt a surge of unease. Smoke meant people, and people meant danger. As I crested a hill, the source of the smoke came into view. A small village nestled in a valley below. Smoke curled from chimneys, a peaceful scene that sent a jolt of suspicion through me. Villages didn't exist in isolation. They had alliances, loyalties. Stepping off the nag, I tethered it to a stunted tree, its bony ribs barely concealed by a thin layer of matted fur. Crouching low, I approached the village, using the hillock as cover. The closer I got, the more the idyllic façade crumbled. The houses were in disrepair, some with gaping holes in their roofs. Gaunt figures shuffled through the muddy streets, their faces marked with despair. This wasn't a haven, but a place clinging to a desperate existence. The question was why? Was it simple neglect or something more sinister? My hand drifted to the hilt of the sword. Information was what I needed and brute force was often the most efficient way to acquire it. I rose to my full height and strode into the village. The villagers turned, their hollow eyes fixed on me. A murmur rippled through the crowd, a mix of fear and morbid curiosity. Easy there, I said, my voice rough from disuse. I'm just passing through. Can someone tell me what's going on here? A wiry old man stepped forward, his face a roadmap of wrinkles. We are damned, marked by the blight, he croaked. Our crops wither, our livestock dies. Blight, you say? I feigned ignorance, hoping to draw him out. The old man nodded, his roomy eyes filled with a desperate hope. They say a powerful sorcerer lives to the north, draining the land of its life force. A sorcerer, not an army. The lie I'd fabricated for the Inquisitors seemed to be taking on a life of its own. Maybe, I said, planting the seed of doubt, but there could be other reasons. The old man's gaze sharpened. Such as? Bandits, I suggested, raiding your supplies, leaving you with nothing. The idea seemed to take root. A spark of defiance flashed in the villagers' eyes. Bandits were a tangible threat, one they could potentially fight. A sorcerer was an invisible monster an unstoppable force of despair. Perhaps you're right, the old man finally conceded. Thank you, stranger. May your journey be blessed. Blessed. Hardly the word I'd use, but for now it served my purpose. I had deflected their fear, planted a seed of rebellion in their minds. The villagers' gratitude felt like dust on my tongue, a fleeting sensation overshadowed by the pressing reality of my situation. I needed supplies, food, water, perhaps even a new mount. This nag wouldn't last much longer. Stealing was an option, of course, a skill I'd honed to a fine edge during my years scraping by in the city's underbelly. But I was no longer a hungry vagrant. I was Evren, the demon-marked mercenary, and subtlety held a certain appeal compared to the blunt force of theft. With a curt nod of farewell, I strode through the village, the stares of the sallow-faced inhabitants following me like hungry shadows. I found a blacksmith at his forge, the rhythmic clang of hammer on metal, the only cheerful sound in the entire hamlet. He was a burly man with a thick beard and a suspicious glint in his eyes. What brings you here, marked one? He growled, wiping sweat from his brow. I didn't flinch. Passage, I replied, my voice a low rumble. I need supplies for a journey north. The blacksmith chuckled, a humorless sound. North? That way lies only death. 
Maybe, I conceded, but that's the direction I need to go. I met his gaze head on, my hand resting pointedly on the hilt of my sword. Unless you have a suggestion. The blacksmith eyed me for a long, tense moment. Then, with a grunt, he turned back to his forge. Fine. You want supplies, it'll cost you. We negotiated, our voices a low growl in the smoky air. The price was steep a stolen silver locket I'd kept hidden away from the Inquisitors. But it secured a fresh water skin, a bag of dried meat, and a map. This one more detailed than the childish scribble from the church. Nightfall found me perched on a hillock overlooking the village. The meagre meal sat heavy in my stomach, the water skin hung at my hip, and the map, crudely drawn on animal hide, lay unfolded on the dry earth. The sorcerer story was a gamble, a smokescreen to divert attention from my true purpose. Finding some semblance of freedom beyond the reach of the church and the nobles who coveted the power they believed resided within me. The North remained my only option, a vast unknown promising both danger and, just possibly, a chance to carve my own path. As I traced my finger along the map's rough lines, movement in the distance caught my eye. A lone figure silhouetted against the dying embers of the village fires. Curiosity warred with caution, but survival often hinged on taking calculated risks. Leaving the map and the waterskin behind, I crept closer, using the cloak of darkness as my shield. The figure stood by a well, its back to me. My hand tightened around the sword hilt. Friend or foe. This world offered few allies and even fewer displays of genuine kindness. Who's there? I rasped, the question barely audible above the rustling leaves. The figure spun around, a startled gasp escaping their lips. It was a young man, no older than I, clad in ragged leathers. Relief washed over me, momentarily eclipsing the ever-present wariness. Easy there, I said lowering my weapon slightly. No need to be afraid, just a traveller passing through. He stared at me, his eyes wide and wary. Where? Where are you going? North, I answered simply. Something defiance, perhaps, or a spark of his own desperation ignited in his gaze. The North is dangerous, he finally spoke, full of things. I can handle myself, I replied with a confidence I didn't entirely feel. You haven't answered my question, what about you? He hesitated, then spat on the ground. This village is a dead end. I'm leaving. A silent understanding passed between us. Tiredness gnawed at my bones, urging me to rest. But something in the young man's eyes, the shared spark of rebellion against the bleak reality we inhabited, propelled me forward. What's your name? I asked extending a tentative olive branch. He hesitated, then mumbled, Varys. Well, Varys, I said, offering a small smile, a gesture that felt foreign on my lips. Care to share a journey north with a marked one? Varys didn't smile back, but something akin to hope stirred in his eyes. We were both outcasts, adrift in a world that feared and despised us, the dawning light revealed a harsh truth. Varys, despite his initial defiance, looked younger than his years. His face, etched with worry lines beyond his age, spoke of a harsh past. An unspoken question hung in the air. What drove him to abandon the village, to venture north with a stranger marked by the church as something less than human? I didn't pry. Secrets were a currency in this world and mine were worth more than gold. Still, a begrudging camaraderie formed as we shared the meagre breakfast of dried meat and hardtack. The map, now folded and tucked into my belt pouch, provided the direction. North. A vast, unforgiving landmass that seemed to swallow the horizon. With Varys taking the lead on the nag, a slight improvement in travel efficiency, we set off. The village receded in the distance, a symbol of the life I'd left behind. The sorcerer story, a gamble I'd played with the Inquisitors, became an unexpected truth in this desolate landscape. 
The rumours grew thicker with every passing mile. We encountered other villages, their inhabitants gaunt and hollow-eyed, their stories eerily similar, failing crops, dying livestock, a general aura of despair. The fear, however, was not directed solely at the invisible force draining the land. It clung to me too, a tangible aura that made every interaction a tense negotiation. One evening, huddled around a meager fire in a deserted barn, Varys finally voiced the question that hung in the air. Are you... are you really demon spawn? I stared at the dancing flames, their light reflecting in my eyes. Does it matter? I finally replied, my voice raspy. Church or demon, it's all the same to the likes of them. Varys remained silent, but understanding passed between us. We were both outcasts, marked by fear and suspicion. The world wanted us to pick a side, demon or divine, but in this desolate landscape, the lines blurred. We were simply trying to survive, clinging to a desperate hope for some semblance of freedom. Days bled into weeks. The once fertile land gave way to a harsh, unforgiving landscape. Skeletal trees, windswept plains, and an unsettling emptiness that gnawed at the soul. Hunger became a constant companion, our rations dwindling. The promised sorcerer, a figment of my imagination at first, now loomed as a desperate source of hope. Perhaps they held the key to not just survival, but to ending this blight. One desolate evening, as we camped beneath a sky choked by crows, Varys returned from scouting, a mixture of fear and excitement on his face. I found something, he whispered, his voice barely audible above the howling wind. Following him, I traversed a rocky outcropping, arriving at a hidden valley shrouded in mist. Through the swirling vapour I saw it, a starkly beautiful tower, its black stone gleaming like an obsidian monolith in the twilight. Smoke curled from a chimney, a testament to habitation. The sorcerer's lair, a symbol of both hope and dread. It was the culmination of my fabricated quest, the point of no return. But beyond the practicalities, a thrill of anticipation surged through me. This was it. Here, where shadows danced and secrets resided, my true journey, the one for survival and perhaps redemption, might just begin. The mist clung to the valley floor like a malevolent shroud, swallowing the black tower whole. Varys, his eyes wide with a fear I mirrored, stood rooted to the spot. The wind carried the faint scent of wood smoke and something else, something acrid and unsettling. Are you sure this is the place? I whispered. Varys swallowed hard, then nodded. There have been whisperings, a dark tower, a powerful sorcerer. Powerful or not, I knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park. The architecture itself spoke of a place built for solitude, not visitors. The tower was tall and imposing. Its only entrance, a single heavy iron door at its base, was barred shut. A plan hastily formed solidified in my mind. Look for another way in, I said, my voice surprisingly steady. Anything, a hidden passage, a back door. Varys shot me a questioning glance, but with a silent nod he scurried off into the swirling mist, his ragged form quickly swallowed by the hungry shadows. I took a deep breath, the biting wind stinging my lungs. The ground beneath my feet was uneven, littered with loose stones. As if summoned by my apprehension, a raven, its black form stark against the encroaching darkness, landed on a nearby rock. It cawed once, a harsh sound that cut through the eerily silent, desolate valley. My hand instinctively reached for the hilt of my sword. The rust against my palm felt oddly comforting. Suddenly, a deep rumble like distant thunder erupted from within the tower, shaking the very ground beneath my feet. Stones clattered down from the crenellations above, showering me with dust and debris. The iron door creaked open a sliver of light escaping into the swirling mist. My heart hammered against my ribs, each beat a frantic drum against my eardrums. This wasn't part of the plan. But then again, in this world, were there ever any real plans? Gripping my sword tighter, 
I took a step forward, stepping into the darkness that beckoned. The air inside was thick with dust and the cloying scent of incense. The only light came from torches set at intervals along the wall. The passage before me was long and narrow. Adrenaline coursed through me, a potent cocktail of fear and something else, a primal urge to survive at any cost. Every nerve screamed caution, but turning back was no longer an option. The door had slammed shut behind me with a deafening boom, plunging the corridor into an even deeper gloom. I pressed on, my senses on high alert. The passage twisted and turned, leading deeper into the heart of the tower. The walls were adorned with strange symbols that made my skin crawl. Then a sound, a low chanting coming from somewhere ahead. The voice, sinister and power-laden, sent shivers down my spine. I rounded a corner, my hand tightening around the sword hilt. In the chamber before me, bathed in an eerie red glow emanating from a brazier filled with glowing coals, stood a figure. Tall and cloaked in black robes, his face shrouded in shadow, he chanted words in that same otherworldly tongue. The sorcerer. But what truly sent a jolt of fear through me wasn't the figure himself, but what lay before him. A desiccated husk of a man, drained of all life force, his lifeless eyes staring vacantly into the distance. This wasn't the solution I'd sought. This was something far more sinister, far more terrifying. The chanting ceased, replaced by a deep cough. Who dares interrupt my work? The sorcerer hissed, his voice laced with power and disdain. The faint glimmer of hope within me extinguished. This wasn't a conversation I was prepared for. This wasn't about a blight or a fabricated threat. This was something altogether darker, a power that thrived on death and despair. My voice, when I finally spoke, was a hoarse whisper. Evren, I croaked, raising my chin in defiance. And I'm not here to be drained. The sorcerer, his form still hidden in shadow, chuckled, a dry, humorless sound that sent goosebumps erupting across my skin. Foolish boy, he rasped. Do you truly believe you have a choice? As he stepped forward, the red glow illuminating his face, a gasp escaped my lips, not from fear, but from a primal recognition that clawed its way up from the depths of my being. The sorcerer's face, revealed in the crimson glow of the brazier, was a mockery of my own. The same burning mark marred his palm, a twisted reflection of the one seared into my skin. This wasn't just any sorcerer. This was my sire, the demon my entire life had been defined by. The revelation hung heavy in the air, a thick silence pressing down on us. My mind reeled, years of carefully constructed narratives crumbling to dust. Every accusation, every hateful glance from the villagers suddenly made sense. I wasn't just ostracized. I was a living reminder of his monstrous legacy. So, the demon finally spoke, his voice dripping with a chilling amusement. The marked air finally graces me with his presence. There was no warmth, no paternal affection in his tone, just a cold, calculating interest. You, I stammered, my voice barely a whisper, you're the reason for the blight? He laughed, a harsh grating sound. A necessary stepchild. To draw you in, expose you. Confusion battled with a growing sense of dread. Expose me? Expose me to what? What did this monster want from me? You're weak, the demon continued, his words laced with disdain. Unfocused, but the potential, oh, the potential. The implication hung heavy in the air. I wasn't here to be drained. I was here to be claimed. My blood, my tainted heritage, was the key to unlocking a power far greater than anything the church or the nobles could comprehend. Panic surged through me, a primal response to a predator cornering his prey. But panic wouldn't save me. I glanced down at the lifeless husk by the brazier. You misunderstand, I said, my voice surprisingly steady. I'm not your pawn. Surprise crossed the demon's face, quickly replaced by a cruel smile. Denial is a common first stage, he chuckled. But fear not, child. 
I have ways of convincing the most stubborn. He raised a hand, dark energy crackling around his fingertips. My grip tightened on my sword, the hilt digging into my palm. This was it. There would be no negotiation, no redemption. It was survival against annihilation. But just as the demon unleashed his attack, a loud clang startled me from behind. Varys stood at the entrance to the chamber, his face pale but resolute. He held a rusty iron bar, ripped from the dungeon-like corridor we'd traversed. Leave him alone, Varys yelled, his voice surprisingly strong. The demon turned, his gaze darting between us. A cruel smile stretched across his face. And you, he hissed, his voice dripping with disdain. Who dares interrupt? A friend, I croaked, taking a step forward. And we don't take kindly to demon spawn messing with ours. It was far from the perfect plan, but it was all we had. The demon's gaze settled on me, a dark amusement dancing in his eyes. Perhaps he saw something else now. Defiance. Maybe even a hint of the power he coveted. Interesting, he rasped, his voice a low growl. Perhaps there's more to you than meets the eye, child. With a flick of his wrist, he sent a bolt of energy towards Varys. The young man screamed as it slammed into him, sending him flying across the chamber. Rage, a primal and unfamiliar emotion, surged through me. I lunged forward, the demon lord easily sidestepping my clumsy attack. My sword felt clumsy in my hand, a useless weapon against such raw power. The demon backhanded me, the blow sending me sprawling across the cold stone floor. Stars danced in my vision, the metallic tang of blood filling my mouth. But through the haze of pain, I saw something in the corner of my eye. A fallen torch, its dying embers spitting defiance into the darkness. Desperate, I scrambled towards it, ignoring the searing pain in my side. As the demon closed in, a dark smile twisting his features, I snatched up the torch. You want power? I roared thrusting the flaming brand towards him. Here's a taste! A primal scream ripped through the chamber as the flames engulfed the demon lord. He writhed and recoiled, a look of pure terror contorting his face. He was powerful, yes, but even demons feared fire. The stench of burning flesh filled the chamber, a foul counterpoint to the hiss and crackle of the flaming torch. The demon lord thrashed, a monstrous silhouette writhing in the crimson glow of the brazier. His screams, a cacophony of pain and rage, bounced off the rough-hewn stone walls. For a horrifying moment, I thought I'd done the impossible. But then, the flames began to sputter and die, extinguished by the demon's own dark magic. He lurched back, his form shifting like an unstable image. His face contorted in a mask of fury. Foolish mortal, he rasped, his voice laced with a terrifying calmness. Do you truly believe fire can harm me? Panic clawed at my throat. I stumbled back, my gaze darting around the chamber for any shred of hope. Varys lay crumpled in the corner. I was alone, facing a creature of unimaginable power, and my only weapon was a sputtering torch. But defeat wasn't an option, not yet. A primal defiance surged through me, a desperate will to survive against all odds. The demon lord advanced, his every step a tremor that shook the very foundation of the tower. I gripped the hilt of my sword tighter, the cold metal offering a sliver of comfort in this swirling nightmare. This wasn't a weapon forged for slaying demons, but it was all I had. As the demon lunged, his claws outstretched, I sidestepped with surprising agility fueled by adrenaline and a desperate hope. The creature roared in frustration, its blow slamming into the wall with enough force to send a shower of debris raining down. We danced a macabre waltz in the crimson-lit chamber, my every movement fueled by desperation, his by an overwhelming power. My sword clanged uselessly against his dark, obsidian-like skin, each blow leaving barely a scratch. He was toying with me, a cat batting at a cornered mouse. The knowledge filled me with a cold fury. Maybe I couldn't defeat him, but I wouldn't go down without a fight. Suddenly, a memory surfaced. 
a half-forgotten tale from my childhood, a story whispered by a ragged old crone in a back alley tavern, a legend of a hidden power within the blood of demon-marked heirs, a power that could potentially challenge even the darkest of entities. Desperation fueling my actions, I slashed my palm across the rough edge of the broken torch handle, ignoring the searing pain that lanced through my hand. Blood, crimson and vital, welled up, staining the cold metal. With a roar, I flung the bloodied torch at the demon lord. The moment it touched his skin, a blinding light erupted, filling the chamber with an otherworldly radiance. The demon shrieked, a sound unlike anything I'd ever heard, its primal terror seeping into his very essence. He stumbled back, clawing at his burning flesh. The air crackled with raw energy the very fabric of reality seeming to strain under the pressure. This wasn't the fire from the torch. This was something far more potent, something awakened by the mingling of my demon-tainted blood with the forgotten magic of the chamber. The demon lord, his once powerful form now shrunken, turned his enraged gaze towards me. But before he could unleash whatever wrath he had left, the chamber shuddered violently. The walls began to crack the ceiling groaning under an unseen weight. The tower, unable to contain the unleashed power, was on the verge of collapse. I grabbed Varys, slinging him unconscious over my shoulder. With a final defiant snarl at the now weakened demon lord, I scrambled towards the exit. The chamber crumbled behind me, the roar of collapsing stone a deafening symphony of destruction. We burst through the heavy iron door just as the tower gave way with a thunderous boom. The ground shook violently, dust and debris raining down from the collapsing structure. I stumbled forward, coughing and hacking, Varys a dead weight against my shoulder. When the dust settled, the once imposing tower was gone, replaced by a smouldering crater. Panting, I lowered Varys to the ground, checking his pulse. It was weak, but there... Relief washed over me, a wave that threatened to drown me in its intensity. We had survived, barely. But what had we truly achieved? The Demon Lord was weakened, but not vanquished. He would regroup, his hunger for power undimmed, and the mark on my hand burned brighter than ever. The years that followed were a relentless crucible that forged me anew. Varys, the young man who shared my journey, never fully recovered. He remained a shadow of his former self, haunted by glimpses of the tower and the horrors we faced within. I wandered, a solitary figure on a scarred landscape. The north was transformed. Where the blight had once leached the life from the land, patches of vibrant green tentatively sprouted. Stories spread like wildfire. The sorcerer was dead, consumed by his own black magic. Villagers, no longer cowering in the face of impending doom, began to rebuild their lives amidst the ashes. Yet they looked at me differently now. I wasn't just the marked heir or a convenient scapegoat. I was a legend, my name whispered in hushed tones by the crackling embers of campfires. I was the demon slayer, the one who had dared challenge the darkness and lived to tell the tale. The truth, however, was a far more bitter pill to swallow. My actions in the tower had merely delayed the inevitable. The demon lord, weakened but far from dead, lurked in the shadows biding his time, his hunger growing with each passing day. The mark on my palm throbbed with a grim reminder. I was inextricably bound to the very evil I fought. The blood I'd spilled had a price, a ripple of power thrumming beneath the surface, a raw potential the demon coveted. I became a nomad, avoiding the growing crowds who sought salvation or vengeance. Each night, beneath the vastness of a starlit sky, sleep was a fleeting, troubled thing. Dreams of the tower and the demon's burning gaze haunted me. The church, ever keen to capitalize on fear and desperation, sought me out. Messengers arrived with gilded scrolls, bearing offers of sanctuary and redemption. Redemption for a demon-tainted soul sounded like a cruel joke. Sanctuary was the last thing I needed. My sword, once a symbol of desperation, 
became my purpose. The villagers saw a hero. I saw a weapon, honed by battle and fueled by necessity. Yet, with every beast slain, every bandit dispatched, a creeping unease settled into my bones. Was I becoming an imitation of the very monster I sought to defy? I found a measure of solace in the brotherhood of outcasts. They didn't care about my parentage or the whispers of demonic power. They were hardened men, veterans of cruel battlefields, survivors like me. Their acceptance wasn't based on the stories about me, but on the cold steel at my side and the scars etched across my body. Proof I could hold my own when the darkness closed in. Yet, the spectre of the Demon Lord loomed large. Each sunrise brought the knowledge that another day of freedom was nothing but a borrowed respite. The world was too vast, the shadows too many. Eventually our paths would cross again. My journey had no end, no glorious victory to be won. There was only survival, an unwavering defiance in the face of the inevitable. I was no hero, no saviour. I was a flawed, hunted creature in a world that both feared and needed me. The mark burned brighter, searing itself into my very soul. Every breath carried the weight of the final battle yet to come, of the moment when demon and air would collide once more. And that day, perhaps, the world itself would be the battlefield.